but I can't ask our supporters to volunteer their time and donate their resources if we don't have a clear path to victory. Accordingly, I am today suspending my campaign. Winston Churchill once remarked that success is not final, failure is not fatal, it is the courage to continue that counts. You heard that right. The campaign of the candidate once hailed as the future is now defunct. But I'm Ron DeSantis has dropped out of the 2024 presidential race and endorsed Donald Trump like the bootlicking cuck that he is. And he managed to embarrass himself just one last time by misquoting Winston Churchill. Now, it's not the fake quote that makes this so funny. What makes it especially hilarious is that the quote that he used is actually attributed to Bud Light. As Newsweek explains, a 1939 edition of Life magazine found on Google Books shows the ad from Budweiser, which includes includes the quote used by DeSantis on Sunday. Newsweek reached out to DeSantis's campaign via email for further comment. The accidental use of the quote by DeSantis comes after he repeatedly criticized Bud Light and Budweiser's parent company Anheuser-Busch after they partnered with Dylan Mulvaney, a transgender influencer and activist. Oh, we know Newsweek. We know. How ironic. I feel like this is the universe's way of humiliating DeSantis just one last time. Not like he really needed any help, because if you'll recall, this campaign was a disaster from the very beginning. And this is because he decided for some reason to launch his campaign during a Twitter Spaces event. Let's look back at how bad that was. So they just keep crashing, huh? Yeah, I think we've got <laughs> a, just a massive number of people online, so it's... Um Servers are straining somewhat. Now it's quiet. Elon is sitting next to me. And we, want, and we want to welcome you to this historic Twitter Spaces event and more broadly, a first in the history of social media. Well, I am running for president of the United States to lead our great American comeback. That is how Ron DeSantis chose to launch his presidential campaign. I mean, even if everything went smoothly, it'd still be a bizarre choice, but it did not go smoothly. And that kind of set the tone for the entire campaign. And I say this because he became a laughing stock for a number of reasons really quickly. And typically presidential candidates, they want to go viral, but DeSantis went viral multiple times, albeit for all the wrong reasons, case in point. And I will not let you down. See, humans, I too have emotions. <laughs> it's just a lot of people speculated that like that was one of his aides telling him that he needs to smile more and then him just like not knowing how to do that in a really organic way. So just trying to shoehorn in a smile. And that's that's the result. It's just it's beautiful. Not his face, but the result, the overall essence of that was beautiful just hilarious but while most people probably remember that as the most humiliating moment for desantis i actually think that this moment takes the cake are you the type of person like i have people around me that love to say hey fat you got something between your teeth these are the annoying people in your life right hey pat pull your zipper up you know hey pat do this hey pull one of your socks is lower than the other one i'm sure your marketing team points out how they're trying to troll you in the marketplace okay i'm sure they're doing that can you bring this one clip I know you were on, uh, 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 what do you call it, on, uh, uh, what was it, Bill Maher, and Bill Maher talked about the boots. I've seen you walk with these boots. Go ahead and play this clip. This on TikTok went viral. It doesn't have a million views. It doesn't have, you know, 10 million views. This thing's got 1.2 million likes. And and some people are wondering. How, what are they? I don't even, so I haven't what, seen that. What there's, they've not shown this to you. Okay, no. what they're trying to say with this is that in your boots, you have heels. No, no, no. That's yeah, what no, no to those say. are just standard off the rack um, Lucchese. Um, uh, how, how, Lucchese tall are you? Books, how tall are you, Governor? How tall 5'11. Are you? 5'11. Okay. Why don't you wear tennis shoes and dress shoes? Brutal. Just absolutely brutal. And the irony here is that the man who everyone is accusing of wearing high heels is the same man who banned drag in Florida. And to add another layer to the cringe, he is presumably wearing high heels because he is insecure about his height. It's just 
so humiliating. Like this is actual cringe where you feel firsthand embarrassment for somebody else. But these embarrassing moments that kept coming were all self-inflicted. Remember, there was the report about him eating pudding with his fingers, which was pounced on by Donald Trump's teen, who then subsequently turned that report into an ad, not to mention his beef with Disney that blew up in his face in the middle of his campaign last year. But aside from all of the embarrassing moments, he also made a lot of oopsies during his campaign. And to be clear, when I say oopsie, I mean go for Nazi to the layperson. For example, he was forced to fire a staffer who made a video of him using Nazi imagery. His team also released ads bragging about his fascist policies that he produced that went viral because of how scathing the criticism was that he chose to boost. And I was in some of these ads, literally. Just produced some of the harshest, most draconian laws that literally threaten trans existence. What's your reaction to that video? You know, it really feels like we're living in the twilight zone sometimes, not just because it's very bizarre to see yourself in an ad for a presidential candidate, but because the presidential candidate is taking clips where people are saying he's a bad person and then they're boosting those. They're saying, look, this is what they're saying about him. Vote for him. He's a bad person. See what? Whew. That is the dumbest thing imaginable. Now, I think that Tim Miller of The Bulwark put it best when explaining the absurdity of these viral ads. He writes, given the context, the inclusion of Figueredo's line about how DeSantis's policies literally threaten trans existence is deeply disturbing. That this line would make it into a product put out by one of the leading contenders for the presidency is a scandal. It ought to create a total and complete repudiation from the campaign just to have any hope of surviving. Say what you will about Mitt Romney's 47% gaffe, it pales in comparison to suggesting that you want to pass laws that literally threaten the existence of a marginalized class of Americans like it's a good thing. And I completely agree with that. I mean, imagine how the right would react if a Democratic candidate, for example, featured a critic in an ad who accused them of threatening the existence of Christianity with their policies as if that were a good thing. They would lose their minds. But when it comes to trans people, DeSantis is basically boasting about the fact that he's a monster and he wants to own it. But that type of language, like this cruelty, is not going to resonate with people outside of Florida, or it's not going to work as well as it does in Florida. And part of the reason why he was successful in Florida is because in his own state, he can have this perfectly controlled, curated image where the media and the government in that state is on his side. But I mean, the second that you leave Florida, this image that you try to project, it falls apart. And to make matters worse, he shit the bed entirely and ran a terrible campaign. So that's why everything kind of crumbled around him. Now, what's even more astonishing is the fact that the media wanted to prop up DeSantis at the start because even though liberal pundits, for example, might not necessarily like him, they prefer him to Trump because they view him as less dangerous than Trump, even though I disagree with that. But with that in mind, you would think that there would be some level of trepidation from liberal pundits, at least, after he announced the end of his campaign. But not really. They were basically like, yeah, this guy fucking sucks. And their insight into why he lost was actually spot on. So I want to give you a couple of examples here. The political obituary is almost too easy to write. He was a bad candidate. He had a lousy message and a truly terrible campaign. But maybe it wouldn't have made any difference because this says so much about the Republican Party as well. He calculated that if he moved to the right of Donald Trump on the cultural issues, that somehow he could be Trumpism without Trump. But the problem is the Republican yeah. base wanted mm -hmm. Trump. They wanted the show. You, you, you have a choice. You have to pick a lane. And Donald Trump had the MAGA lane, had the extreme MAGA lane. And so here you had Fat Elvis, 77, and you had Ron DeSantis saying, I'm going to go to Vegas and I'm going to fill that lane, right? Why? Why? Like, if you can't, if, if, if that lane's already filled, then do the Beatles. If you can't do the Beatles, do Dylan. If you can't do the Dylan, do, be fifth, fifth Dimension. Be anybody, but don't try to be Fat Elvis. They got that on the strip. A lot of it. They got a lot of it. <laughs> Uh, you know, Ron DeSantis spent a lot of time in the run up to the primaries and caucuses getting underway, uh, going after wokeism, uh, going after targets yep. like Walt Disney. And at the end, he went from Space Mountain to It's a Small World. I mean, it just did not work. And I wonder, did, 
Does that message really just not resonate with Republicans as much as maybe folks think on social media and uh, the sort of towel snapping right. uh, corners of, of the far right? It just it just doesn't resonate with voters. No, that, that, that's exactly right, especially here in New Hampshire. I mean, at the end of the day, we're the live free or die state. You know, we like government to be smaller and out of the way, let businesses run themselves. Um, and, and that was what was always fascinating to me is that, um, you know, I think Ron DeSantis and his team early on may have misread the room. They kind of thought their support was going to come from the hardest of hardcore Trump supporters, when in reality, he was picking up uh, you know, a lot of the non-Trump supporters, uh, the non-Trump voters, yeah. folks who were a little bit more centrist or even center right. Uh, and yet he was still moving to the right to try to outmaneuver Donald Trump ideologically for Iowa. You know, they made this miscalculation early on in the campaign that somehow they had to, you know, deal a death blow to Donald Trump in Iowa, which is a caucus state, low turnout affair the hardest of hardcore party activists participate in it. And so in order to try to even have a chance there, they had to move to the right, which really killed all of his appeal to the independent voters and then moderate Republican voters he would need in a state like New Hampshire, where you do have a plethora of yeah. other uh, voters to target that aren't so committed to supporting Donald Trump. And I'll just add one, one other quick thing. The other thing we don't talk about enough is that uh, Ron DeSantis tried to say, I am Trump without the drama and that I can beat Joe Biden. He'll lose to Joe Biden. Well, the electability argument went out the window when poll after poll started showing that Trump was leading Biden in a lot of these key swing states. Uh, a lot of voters said, well, if that's the case, I'm not going to go with New Coke. I'm just going to go with the original because I seem to like that enough. And that guy, I think, can win. Yeah, I mean, I think that everything they're saying here is perfectly reasonable. And I think it's funny to see mainstream media drag somebody who was really appealing to the mainstream because he was this alternative to Trump. But to this point that he tried to be Trump without the baggage, well, the editorial board of the Miami Herald in his home state obviously explained specifically why he failed after being poised to be the person that was supposed to save the GOP from Trump. They write, it's not just that he was steamrolled by Donald Trump. DeSantis never appeared to want to save the GOP. He was more interested in making it a more ravenous, angrier, and intolerant party. That worked for Trump, but didn't work for the governor with all the charisma of burned toast god damn they are dragging the shit out of him but it's well deserved now it's not just that he came off as inauthentic and lacked charisma he also just ran a bad campaign full stop or as politico put it his campaign team ran the worst campaign in history, and they argue, start with an indisputable fact. At the beginning of 2023, Governor Ron DeSantis was in first place, ahead of former President Donald Trump, then acknowledged that the DeSantis campaign and Super PAC raised more money than any other campaign, including that of the former presidents. Many in the GOP billionaire class gushed over DeSantis, promising to spend whatever it would take to vanquish the former president. What could go wrong? Well, everything. And the article goes on to talk about his lack of strategy and whatnot, but this paragraph in particular that explains why the hype died down is especially ruthless, and I want to read it to you. Quote, the candidate did not match the hype. He was less than advertised. In person, he was a diminutive politician. The campaign introduced him to the nation as a bright but socially awkward introvert, a nerd who did not enjoy people, which was a problem since voters tend to be people. Now, in my opinion, it's not just that he's socially awkward and introverted because there are many people who I know even who are socially awkward and introverted who don't come off the way that Ron DeSantis comes off. In my opinion, not to play armchair psychiatrist here, but I'm going to do it anyway. He comes off as a sociopath, if not outright psychopathic. And I'm not saying that to be hyperbolic. I mean, I think he literally might be a psychopath. I think that it's reflected in not just his behavior and his personality, but in his priorities and policies as well. It's not just that he has no regard for the pain and suffering that he inflicts on people in his state, but he seemingly relishes in it. And this makes him a bad salesperson for fascism, because in order to win over the normies, which is the goal if you want to be president, fascists have to convince the masses that the stakes are much greater and there's some sort of an existential threat that they have to oppose. And he just didn't construct that narrative or any narrative at all, nor did he have the ability to sell it even if he wanted to, even if he had a narrative. So Americans just kind of saw him as this weird ass dude who was kind of annoyed by wokeism. And even if maybe they thought that wokeism was annoying too, well, he's not the guy who they went with. Donald Trump had the entire base on lock and normies 
went with Nikki Haley instead, seemingly, in the Republican side, if you consider any Republican to be a norm yet at this point, which is debatable. But even though he couldn't win over Americans, he did win over one person. Before we begin, I'd like to take time to congratulate Ron DeSantis and, of course, a really terrific person who had gotten to know his wife, Casey, for having run a great campaign for president. He did. He ran a a really good campaign, I will tell you. It's not easy. They think it's easy doing this stuff, right? It's not easy. But as you know, he left the campaign trail today at 3 p.m., and in so doing, he was very gracious, and he endorsed me, so I appreciate it. He did it. He managed to win back daddy's approval, and because he kissed the ring, big things are happening. For example, Trump made this announcement to reward Ron for being a good boy. He just said, will I be using the name Ron de Sanctimonious? I said, that name is officially retired. And there it is. Look, it may seem trivial to the rest of us who aren't in this cult, but Trump giving DeSantis the opportunity to redeem himself after being insufficiently loyal to him by running against him gives him the opportunity to still have a career. Without Trump's blessing, that might not be a possibility. He might lose his next reelection in Florida. Now, this is going to help him with the right, right? Maybe in the future, Trump giving him the green light to continue to be a Republican politician might help him in a future GOP primary. But I think that he shit the bed so bad that I can't imagine any future presidential campaign not being DOA because you have to win over more than just Republican fascists. And he didn't just not do that. He made so many embarrassing mistakes that I feel like he just can't recover, right? So I'm glad his campaign is over, but as Melanie DeBrigo put it, it shouldn't be because he should be forced to carry his campaign to term. Precisely, we should force him to endure the pain and humiliation even longer. Woke mom, 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 m